So is there a purpose that senescent cells serve in the body? Yeah, do, do they have any beneficial effect? Yeah, so so the the first one, the most uh, the most common one or the most likely one is to prevent tumor progression. You know, so this is again, um, you need to have all these checkpoints um, that will you know say if a certain cell has divided too rapidly or too many times, um, then there's something wrong with that cell, and we have to we have to stop it. Um, so that that's the first purpose, probably. Uh, a, a very common purpose. The other one is, you know, if we have a damaged cell, um, then, and it's in a tissue where there's some regenerative capacity, for example, the liver. Um, so if you have a senescent cell in, uh, in the liver, uh, you have a, you know, pretty, a tissue that's got high regenerative capacity. So by triggering again, these processes of cellular senescence after damage. So if you have a, you know, too much oxidative stress or so on, um, that a given cell or a given group of cells will become senescent. Um, and then something very interesting happens in those cells that become senescent. So one is that they start producing this um, secretory phenotype that we spoke about, the, the senescence associated secretory phenotype. Um, and th this is one of two things. So one is that through a factor called interleukin-6 um, and probably a whole series of other factors is actually able to kind of reprogram its environments. So it's, it's able to to produce a kind of regenerative um, niche, so you can you can actually get more repair. And the second thing is that the SASP uh, that actually creates all these cytokines will call in the innate immune system. So in the liver, um, it is thought that um, natural killer cells, for example, will then be able to hone in, find the senescent cell, and kill it. And so two things happen here. So there's a cell that got damaged. So maybe more than two things, maybe three things. So the cell gets damaged, starts producing this secretome. Um, it prepares the tissue for repair and then calls in an immune cell to clear it. And you have a healthier tissue than you did, uh, you know, uh, prior to triggering the senescence program. So it's thought that at any given time, there's a, a certain low percentage of cells in different tissues that are senescent. So in the liver, there's not approximation that around two to 3% of, of cells can be senescent at any given time, but because they're again, able to call in the immune system, the innate immune system to clear them, um, then there's really no problem. And the problem with senescent cells arises uh, once this clearance um, is inefficient, or once you start to have accretion of too many senescent cells in a given tissue, then you can imagine they're they're like little factories of, of inflammatory factors. And um, at that point, you can get chronic inflammation and this can lead to fibrosis and, and all sorts of other uh, problems. And, and so really the imbalance between clearance of senescent cells and um, accumulation of senescent cells is when you, when you start to have um, uh, pathology. Right, so it's really a, like an immune problem. <laughs> Again, like everything seems to be an immune problem. Right. Um, so it, it, it's very likely that part of it is this exactly this imbalance where the immune system is just not able to handle the burden of, uh, of, of too many senescent cells. Yeah. Okay. So one question, it's, it's taking a, a little step back. How, so we say senescent cells, right? Senescent cells, like as if they're uniform and there's one kind of senescent cells. Is that kind of valid? Are there many different sorts of senescent cells or are they fairly uniform? No, so they're actually very heterogeneous and that's, a, that's an excellent point. And, and it's actually extremely hard to come to a consensus as to identify a senescent cell and what is a senescent cell, if you like. So we have all these different markers, but, but not one single marker will be able to tell you uh, with confidence that you're looking at a senescent cell. Um, and so again, different, different stressors lead to, to different types of senescence. Um, so one example that um, we've worked on in, in my lab is uh, something called post-mitotic senescence. So we called it Comics. <laughs> and what, what we think happens here is that um, certain neurons will trigger a program of senescence. They won't die. They'll go into a dormant state. 
Um, and then we're not too sure what happens. We're looking into, you know, what's the future of these cells. Um, and they, they re-become, there's like a reversible type of senescence. So this is a, a bit less clear why that happens. Um, and interestingly, those neurons, they, they're actually, um, they, they trigger different survival mechanisms than, for example, a senescent uh, blood vessel cell. Uh, so we know that cells in, in the blood vessels, they can become, um, uh, they, they trigger these survival programs that we actually now understand pretty well and are able to, to target with drugs. Um, so uh, really different types of stresses, different types of cells uh, will lead to, to different types of senescence. So there's no like, um, you know, uniform definition of a senescent cell there. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a spectrum if you want. Right. Okay, so I'd like to turn to senescent cell life cycle, although we, we kind of covered some of that. So the, the cell becomes senescent due to some form of stress, um, which was, and so it could be like telomere shortening, but it could also be some form of external stress. So the, the senescent cells, we call them senescent, but they're, they're still metabolically active, right? So that they're not actually, I mean, senescence makes them sound like they're just lying there, but that's not correct. That, that's not correct. Yeah. And, and I think it, exactly, there's a bit of a, a misconception that we think those cells are, you know, just uh, completely asleep, uh, dormant, not doing anything. But, um, but I mean, even even a hibernating cell will, will be metabolically active, right? So, um, so the jury's a bit out exactly how to define or what happens with the metabolism of a, of a senescent cell. So different, different processes have been noted. Um, one thing, so, you know, metabolism is all about making carbons essentially, right. And energy. So, so if you have, um, if you have a very glycolytic cell, you're going to, uh, probably, um, become a bit, you know, you're, you're going to produce carbons and you'll, you'll have a bigger cell, then you're going to be able to produce more cytokines. So that's, you know, one of the signatures of senescent cells is production of cytokines. So for the SAS, um, so certain types of, um, so, uh, cancer cells, for example, become quite, um, glycolytic when they're senescent and you can actually use that as an Achilles, um, heel and uh, target um, some glycolytic processes to kill those senescent cells. Um, whereas other types of senescent cells will start to ramp up their, um, uh, through, the, through the glycolysis cycle, eventually take the pyruvate into the TCA cycle, so into the Krebs cycle. And um, so they'll ramp up their Krebs cycle. Um, so, so again, it's, there, there's no real definition as to, you know, you can target all senescent cells by targeting glycolysis. Um, some of them are, are quite glycolytic. Others will, will, will hit the, the Krebs cycle or will ramp up the Krebs cycle. Um, and, and yeah, but the, the bottom line is they're metabolically active. So they're still, they're still quite active cells. Okay. So when a, so a cell during the life cycle of a cell, right? It starts off mitotic, and then it, it becomes um, apoptosis or senescent, or maybe it gets cleared up by the immune system or it becomes cancerous. Do we know what makes the cell decide or how that, that decision point happens? Hmm. Yeah, that's an excellent question. Um, so, so essentially, uh, why would certain cells go down the pathway of senescence whereas other ones would, um, would go down apoptosis, correct? Mm, yeah. um, so, so again, so this is, um, the, the two are thought to be mutually exclusive and, and really the trigger as to um, why certain ones will be less prone to go down an apoptotic um, uh, pathway is really due to, to the fact that they start producing survival factors within the cell. And uh, very classic ones are BCL2 members. So essentially um, these pro-survival um, uh, proteins that are uh, within, you know, prevent formation of uh, macro pore complexes in the outer mitochondrial membrane. Um, and so we know that certain types of, of senescent cells, the, the long-lived ones, tend to be quite reliant on those uh, survival proteins. Um, and again, this is another Achilles heel where we can uh, target those particular proteins and send the cell into an apoptotic pathway. Now, what, what will drive a certain cell into senescent uh, 
uh, pathway versus an apoptotic one. Um, again, it's a, it's a bit harder to uh, uh, to fully decipher that equation, um, but certainly if there's uh, a stimulus that leads to DNA damage, um, that you know might favor a certain type of fate like senescence. Whereas if you have um, you know triggering of, of death receptors and so on, then you might have more of a, an apoptotic uh, process. Um, but, but again, there's, there's a lot that we still don't understand within the decision of the cell to, to adopt either a cell type. If a cell comes to what we'd consider like its natural death, right? It's just runs its telomeres down. Does it, does that decide that it will become senescent or apoptotic or is that kind of not relevant? No, it's, it's, it's very relevant. So, so actually, yeah. So if you, if you run it down, um, you know, to a, to a certain point and, you know, you know, your, your pro survival proteins are not, uh, are not enriched enough in that particular cell, then that cell will choose to go down the apoptotic, uh, um, right. pathway. Do, so do senescent cells die? I mean, what, is there any circumstance under which a senescent cell would decide on its own that, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to apoptose myself. Right. Okay. So, so it's thought um, that, you know, this is a protective type of program and those cells typically need to have some sort of stimulus to, to drive them into, um, into an apoptotic. So by the by apoptotic faith, uh, so, so by themselves, um, again, if they're not cleared by the immune system, this could be, th th this is where there, there can be an issue. Um, and the way that you can divert them is, you know, for, through, through um, debalancing the pro-survival um, uh, proteins that you have within the cell. So uh, again, like these mitochondrial uh, survival proteins uh, that, that will prevent formation of the macropore. Um, those, those are typically uh, senescent cells will rely on those for survival. So, um, or, you know, there, there's other uh, proteins called FOXOs that can uh, sequester uh, a, a molecule called P53. And if you interfere with that, you can drive the, the cell into a, uh, a, an apoptotic uh, uh, faith. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.